Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime and this question of the day as well as the next few have me laughing because I supposedly was asking you for two truths and a lie and I said one of the statements below is a lie. Can you spot the fraud? And it took one of my students to point out to me that the first lie was in the title. <laughs> I got four options below. So they're like, well, how many truths and how many lies are there? So guys, there are three truths and a lie. Y'all know you're in trouble when your math teacher can't count. Here we go. <laughs> um, we're looking for a lie. We're looking for a fraud. So students really, really struggle with negative numbers and exponents. So I have to remind you something about the order of operations in order to fully understand this concept. What I'd like to remind you is that the order of operations goes like this. First, you start with groupings. Then after you're done with any groupings, you move on to exponents. Then any multiplication and its inverse division. And then finally, any addition and its inverse subtraction. Um, I abbreviate unlike every other math teacher I've ever met. The order of operations is Gemma, not that other P word that we won't mention, but four steps, groupings, exponents, a multiplication, it's, it's inverse addition, and it's inverse. And now I have to tell you something about the act of negation. Uh, negation, when you have a negative in front of the number one, I'm negating one. What it's like I'm doing is I'm, it's like I'm multiplying one by a negative. So the act of negation falls under the big idea heading of multiplication. Okay, whereas on the other hand, with this little floating number here, that's a power, that's an exponent. So according to the order of operations, I'm supposed to hit up any exponents before I hit up any multiplication, which means in a problem like this, I'm going to deal with my exponent, 1 to the second power, before I look at the negation. So I'm going to ignore the negation for now, and I'm going to do 1 to the second power. Well, what does 1 to the second power mean? Careful, it doesn't mean 1 times 2. It means 1 times itself. Now I know what 1 times 1 is. 1 times 1 is just 1. And now that I've dealt with the exponent, now I'll just drop the negation. Uh, I will negate it after I raise it to a power. And so my answer here does check out to be negative 1. That was true. Well, how about if I had negative 1 to the third power? Uh, let's take a look here. So this one it says uh, take the opposite of one cubed or negate one cubed. Again, I want to cube my number before I negate it. And so that is what I'll do. I'll do one times one times one. After I'm done doing one times one times one, of course I will negate it. Well, one times one times one is one and negating that I do end up with negative one. So you say, Kate, well, it seems like I just always get negative 1 when I raise negative 1 to a power seems like it. Yeah, it does seem like it, but let's see what happens once we start using parentheses. Uh, I can use parentheses to change groupings. And take a look here at how a mathematician used parentheses here. If I take the number negative 1 and close it in parentheses and put the square outside, what am I saying now? Now I'm saying to square this entire grouping. Square the entire grouping, not just the one part anymore. And so that grouping that I did is going to uh, change what I work on first. I'm going to square the grouping uh, rather than squaring before negating here. And that group says that I have negative 1 squared. What does that mean? That means I'm going to take all of negative 1 and multiply it by itself, negative 1. Now in this case, when you multiply or divide negative numbers, I hope you guys know that two negatives cancel. As they famously said in the movie Stand and Deliver, with Jaime Escalante, and that's who I want to be when I grow up. He would make his class chant a negative times a negative is a positive. That's exactly what happens here. The two negatives cancel, and one times one is positive one. When I squared negative one with a parentheses around it, uh, I should have gotten positive one. Now, a lot of students go, oh, my goodness, Kate, whenever there's a parentheses is when it comes out positive. 
Yeah, not so fast. Let's check out D. Let's check out D to see what would happen there. D also has parentheses. I'm taking all of negative one and I'm raising it to the third power. What does that mean? That means I'm taking that entire group of all of negative one, the negative and the one grouped together, and I'm multiplying it by itself, negative one, three times, three negative ones multiplying. Now I agree with you that a negative times a negative is a positive, so that this portion of my problem would come out to positive one, but careful, I have a final act of multiplication to do. I need to multiply positive one by negative one. And of course, if I just have one negative in multiplication, it sticks around. One times one is one. It really does come to negative one here. Okay, so be careful. Parentheses can change things up when I am raising negative numbers to a power. All right, so that A was true, B was true, uh, D was true, it was C that was the lie. Uh, three truths and a lie today, and the lie was C. If you have any questions about this or any other math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer it even if I'm not that great at counting. <laughs> Till next time.